Hey how you guys doing? In this video I'm just going to kind of give you a 5 month update on the MacBook Air and the reason why I'm doing this is because as you guys know, some of you might not know, I was away for about a month, 4 weeks uh, to the Far East and um, I took the MacBook Air with me. Uh, I've done an entire MacBook Air series previous to this a couple of months ago so if you haven't seen that click on the screen. But I went to China and I took the MacBook Air with me. Uh, and I used it of course on a day to day basis and I thought it'd be kind of good to kind of reflect on it now that I've got back and you kind of get to know a bit more uh, a few months down the line and especially if that's the only machine you're using uh, so I thought it'd be kind of fair enough to do an update video now starting off with the bad things because there are only like two of them uh, the first thing is Ethernet now I completely overlooked this even in my review videos and my earlier MacBook Air videos I completely like, ignored it because it wasn't that big to me uh, that's of course uh, when you get to places like uh, Hong Kong and China and you stay in hotels uh, and, if, and you've not got a room booked which has uh, you know Wi-Fi enabled um, so basically there's certain rooms that you can get in hotels so if you pay more you get a Wi-Fi enabled room I only found out you know that later on but the point is so Wi-Fi is only available in lobbies the actual lobby the restaurant the cafe fair enough but when you get into your room, there's no Wi-Fi, uh, and that's kind of the best place for me, at least, to you know sit in the bed or lie in the bed and watch a film or you know go to Twitter, open up, watch a movie, check websites. So that couldn't happen because the, the, the rooms I was staying in didn't have Wi-Fi wi -Fi enabled, and they supplied Ethernet cables. Now, the MacBook Air doesn't have an Ethernet cable or an Ethernet port, shall I say? So. Um, that's the only time that I really missed um, my Ethernet and I did pick up a small dongle, a third party one for about £5 which never worked. Here it is here, I thought I'd take it out. This little thing apparently works with Windows, there are some drivers available on the internet for the Mac but I can't seem to find them. Um, I've just got a product code but that's besides the point. So the Ethernet port, um, you know, if you are going abroad and if you are getting a MacBook Air, one of the reasons that you might be getting a MacBook Air is because of travel, uh, you know, travelling around the world or wherever it is. Uh, so you should invest in an Ethernet Apple branded um, connector thing. So the second bad thing is the backlit keyboard. And I did mention in my review that you know it was kind of bad. I didn't include it and so on. But I never really gave it that much thought, and I did definitely miss it from going from a MacBook Pro to a MacBook Air. Um, but as per my recent travel, I realised how horrible uh, it is not having a backlit keyboard. Travelling by air on a 17-hour flight, um, it can get quite hectic, and especially if you're travelling in cattle class then you do realise you really want to punch the person next to you so if you're travelling now some of you are saying well you can put the light on up you know you can put the physical light up if you do that then the kid sleeping next to you is going to start crying so you'd rather just not move from your seat like uh, that was the position that was in I really couldn't move and if I did move then the way it sat next to me <laughs> So for those of you who are regular travellers and are used to your backlit keyboards and you travel a lot uh, then that is something con to consider when getting a MacBook Air. On the other hand, uh, I think it's kind of good they didn't include it um, because then the battery life would be degraded, which is something that you don't want. And coming on to the second thing, which is the good points, uh, the battery life on this thing is absolutely fantastic. It never kind of let me down. I mean, I used it in various on the plane and so on. And there was never a moment where I was thinking, you know, the battery's going to die out. Of course, battery life does degrade over how much time you use it. And if you don't kind of maintain the battery, I've done a separate video on how to maintain the battery of your MacBook. Click on the screen and you can go directly to that video. So if you don't keep the life cycles and the battery healthy in general, then it is going to degrade much quicker than it from, you know, from uh, normal day-to-day -day usage. In terms of weight, this has just been fantastic. This meaning the MacBook Air. Truly phenomenal. I mean, I was there in China and I visited some exhibitions and these exhibitions were pretty much uh, never ending in terms of walking. Uh, they were pretty much like five or six Heathrows or airport terminals connected together and you were just constantly walking and having the MacBook Air uh, on my shoulder, of course, in a bag uh, was a huge, huge bonus. I could not imagine for a minute uh, carrying around the MacBook Pro. Um, it was just ridiculous because, of course, in the bag I had other papers and stuff and so on. I had the MacBook Air. Uh, so I could not see myself walking around for too long with a MacBook Pro. So all in all, the size uh, and one of the reasons why the MacBook Air is a success is because of the size and the weight of the actual thing, which is truly superb. And lastly, coming on to speed, uh, truly great. I did not edit any videos uh, for the four weeks that I was away, so it was a bit of a break for me in terms of video editing. Uh, but speed-wise, you know, starting up booting times and just generally opening up applications, pages and so on, was a true breeze. It can beat the MacBook Pro or even the iMac any day of the week, thanks to the flash drives that are found in the MacBook Airs, and which is a shame that they didn't include 
or at least offer the same kind of flash storage on the new MacBook Pros which were released uh, two months ago. The second part of the speed is the processor. Now, when back home, uh, I do use this a lot for video editing for my gaming channel uh, and, you know, travelling between the, the MacBook Air and the iMac, you do definitely notice the speed improvements. This is a quad core and this is a quad 2 duo, so this renders the video and exports the video much, much faster. So if you are looking to do a lot of intensive work, if you are doing video work which is paid, if your work relies on you getting videos and photos on time, then the MacBook Air is probably not going to be such a good choice. It'd probably be better off with the new MacBook Pros. That said, there are rumours that this is getting refreshed, and I made a video about this as well. It's going to get refreshed in June. Uh, they're going to go into mass production next month, which is good. And of course, they are rumoured to get the new quad core, or at least a uh, Core i3, Core i5, or a Core i7 chipset. Uh, that would definitely see improvements. If I was in the market for a MacBook just now anyway, I would kind of hold on. A, the white MacBooks are due to go and upgrade or either get scrapped or upgraded and B, we're halfway through the life cycle, or more than halfway anyway, for the MacBook Air, so you might as well see and wait. I think the combination of Apple's next uh, operating system line uh, and the MacBook Airs is going to be a true beast. You're going to see the best of both worlds in terms of iPad and MacBook. Uh, and there is one guy, uh, Steve, um, who I met from Twitter, he's an Apple reseller, he said the iPad, or he's thinking about selling his iPad for a MacBook Air 11 inch, and he's not the only one that I've seen, I've seen a lot of tweets and a lot of messages from people, should they get an iPad or a MacBook Air, or from people who've got both and are selling on their iPad on eBay because they think the 11 inch or the 13 inch MacBook Air is a much overall better experience. So all in all, uh, the MacBook Air is definitely a good machine if you are getting a good price on eBay for a second hand one, go for it. Uh, do not pay full retail, at least I wouldn't pay for a brand new one at this current time knowing there's a refresh around the corner. If you can get a second hand one which is bumped, scratched, whatever and you're getting it for a decent price, go for it. Um, but if you've bought a MacBook Air, um, 11 inch or 13 inch, how are you finding it? You know, I, I'm not really much of a game player, so that's why I never talked about games. Angry Birds uh, is probably the only game that I play on this. Um, but if you've got better gaming tests or general gaming experiences or general thoughts on the MacBook Air, or if you're thinking about getting a MacBook Air, or what do you want to see in the next revision of the MacBook Air, leave a comment below. Leave a video response below, that would be even great. Um, but this wee video has turned into a long video. Uh, if you can rate, comment and subscribe, that would be good and I should probably put this down before I drop it. Thanks for watching guys! I'd like to say thanks to our sponsor Parcel Monkey for sponsoring the show. Guys, check out parcelmonkey.co.uk if you're looking to send a package anywhere in the world at a low cost price. Four simple steps and you'll be sending a parcel in no time.